Hello everyone and welcome to this rather short video on the modeling design of highway bridges. In this video I want to show you very quickly the arrangement we are planning for the highway bridges. So with that being said, sit back, relax and enjoy the show. In case you are new to this channel or this is the first video you have seen, please notice that this is part of a multi-parter video series I will be linking on the top right about the modeling design of highway bridges. It's going to be a long series, but it's going to be worth it. Because the original documentation I have is, of course, a copyrighted, I cannot just show it haphazardly, I have drawn kind of my own uh, arrangement. This is our bridge in the plan view and in the elevation view, or basically the horizontal alignment and the vertical alignment for the highway geeks. In the horizontal alignment, the bridge starts here at A1. Before A1, the carriageway or the road is on the ground. Yes, it is elevated, but there is soil below it. After A1, the carriageway is in midair, and this is where the bridge officially starts. A1 stands for abutment. The A starts for abutment and 1 is a serial number. Of course, it starts at A1 and ends at A2 because there are only two abutments for our bridge. Of course, the bridge is carried by piers P1, P2, P3, P4, all the way until P8. A pier is basically the columns that carry the bridge. Now, there are some things I want to mention. Pier 3 is assumed to be monolithically cast. What does this mean? Well, look, uh, there are elastic bearings here. And the elastic bearing is okay, but it doesn't carry unlimited horizontal forces. Like, it's still a, it's a, it's a rubber piece. So if you just do the bridge like this, it will be unstable in the horizontal directions. Like, for example, if you give it a very powerful force pushing from the left to the right, or from the right to the left, then the bridge will actually detach from its piers because the piers are connected to the bridge, to the deck, via elastic bearings. So if you push from the right, if everything is an elastic bearing, and you push from the right, then you will actually detach the bridge from the piers. Of course, they shouldn't be, and that's the reason why one of the piers in each bridge is assumed to be monolithically cast, meaning the piers and the deck, the substructure and the superstructure in this position are actually cast as a single unit, there is a rigid connection between them. P1, P2, abutment 1, about P4, P5, and P6, and so on. All of those from 1, like 1, abutment 1, P1, P2, P4, P5, and P6, all of those are basically connected to the deck by the elastic bearings. P3 is monolithically cast, so there is force, horizontal force, and vertical force, and moment transfer. This is very important for stability issues. What about P6? P6 is um, special because at P6, there is an expansion joint. An expansion joint or a structural joint here basically splits this into, an own, into its own bridge. Like this side is a bridge that is standalone from this side, which is another bridge. This is like two bridges together. Why? Why did we split the bridge into two bridges? because of thermal expansion and contraction. Because look, the total length of expansion and contraction plays a role in placing an expansion joint. What do I mean by this? Well, you, think, you could think now, you could think, wait a minute, why did you put at six an expansion joint? I mean, look, this is a very small piece in comparison to this big piece. Like, if you put an expansion joint at six, you should at least put another expansion joint to break this side into two pieces because this side seems to be massive and this side seems to be small. Now, yes, you are right in that regard, but I have a defense to this. You see, the length of the expansion here is actually not the entire length of the first bridge, but it's actually the length or half the length of this bridge. Why? Because P3 is the only point that is rigidly connected to the pier, meaning that this will not move. However, all those are allowed to move. P3 is kind of your anchoring point, and that's why the expansion length for the first bridge is actually from P3 to A1 and from P3 to A6. And suddenly you can see 
that, well, it's not that long. Yes, I know you might be tricked into thinking that expansion contraction calculation should be done on the entire length here. However, no, because this is your fixed point. This is, that, this is what anchors the entire structure. So your thermal expansion happens on this half and happens on that half. And considering this, now you can see that the bridge is almost in three thirds. However, this is still not true. Because P7 was decided to be cast monolithically again, this is also for stability issues. Because if you have this piece stand alone, alone, and you have those elastomer bearings, this means that this will once again detach. If you apply a force like this to the bridge, it might detach from the elastomer bearings. So we are adding a monolithically cast pier so that it gives it its stability. Fantastic. This is the planar view. Now, in the longitudinal alignment, this is the abutment one. This is a rough sketch of what I have because I want to produce them myself. And you have the heights. Those are very important because we are going to model in robot or meters or whatever. And when we model, we need to have the coordinates. Now, this is going to break recorder noobs and editor CE's minds, the team that works on robot, because it's going to be a nightmare doing this in 3D. Because now you have to envision this in 3D. This is not a horizontal curve. It, is, it has both horizontal coordinates as well as vertical coordinates. And the calculation of this might be a nightmare. As a matter of fact, I have already suggested to the CE team of robot to make an Excel sheet and try to discretize each arc into multiple pieces. And then just in the Excel sheet, give an X and Y and Z coordinate based on that. Now, I know that I have highway geeks here, and I know that they would tell me, wait a minute, how are you going to find the intermediate heights? I will reply and say, by linear uh, interpolation. The highway geeks will immediately freak out and tell me, wait a minute, you cannot do that because this is a vertical curve. It's not a line. So how dare you do a linear interpolation for something that is a curve? And I want to say that you are 100% correct. You are right. However. This is modeling, and I am allowed to do some approximations for the sake of my own sanity. Also, if you want to really do this, you could just, in your own time, in your own AutoCAD, discretize this entire carriageway into multiple pieces, and then find its z-axis yourself. I will not do this because, of course, the modeling is never 100% accurate, and this inaccuracy is something that the code covers. If you're wondering why I have three lines here, this is the bottom line of the deck. This is the top line of the deck, and this is the center of the deck. So I want, of course, in robot to have the height of the centers, not the height of the top and bottom. Now, also notice that in P6 here, this is where the bridge breaks into two pieces. There is an expansion joint. Of course, those are not structural detail drawing. Those are just drafts to help us model. So yeah, this is rather a short video, but I have to show this to you. I will upload this file to my members for them to access them. But it's not really that cool. I mean, it's just a file with some lines, right? So that's everything I wanted to talk about today. Uh, I really wish Recorder, Noob, and Editor CE all the best of luck because it's going to be a nightmare tomorrow, but it will, it will take time. But, well, that's why CE channel was built. With that being said, I want to give a vertical alignment size shout out to my dear channel members in the contributor level and the helper level whose names are going to be shown on the screen. I really want to thank them from the bottom of my heart because their support to the channel is actually priceless to me and enables me to provide you with videos hopefully on time and with a certain quality I try to achieve and for that I am forever thankful. Of course, I hope that you enjoyed the video and you found it beneficial. If you have enjoyed the video, then please consider liking, sharing, subscribing, commenting and so on, especially subscribing. I mean, come on, it helps increase the reach of my channel. As per usual, this is the Civil Engineering Essentials channel, and we'll catch you in the next video. Bye-bye.